Hey there, welcome to the Drawing Codex. In this video, we're going to be going over some basic foundational drawing exercises. This is one of the most valuable ones I can think of. It's essentially where we're just going to draw cylinders or what I call the coffee cup exercise where what we're trying to do is draw a little cylinder. You can think of this as a toilet roll or something similar. And what we're going to do is just look at exactly how this functions from a technical drawing perspective and how you can use these concepts to, you know, apply to your own drawing where, you know, you might need to draw cylinders if you're drawing trees or little bottles, uh, car wheels. Again, there's a huge variety of reasons why you need to draw a cylinder and this is the best exercise to understand how to do that and to practice it. All right, let's get started. All right, welcome to the Drawing Codex again, where we're here to embrace the challenge of drawing, to draw cool stuff from our imagination, and to master the craft of line and color illustration. I am going to be sketching in a sketchbook, and it is a Strathmore 400 series sketch paper which means, again, it's a little bit thin. It's not the best paper in terms of, you know, being able to hack up and, you know, erase and erase, but um, it's quite a nice high quality paper and it should do the job for what we're going to do today, which is just sketching around. So as I said, what we're actually doing is a fairly simple exercise and I can just, you know, show you very basically what we're going to be doing. And that's, as I said, we're going to be drawing little coffee cups or toilet rolls, basically a simple cylindrical form. But there's a little bit more to it. The reason that this is important is that you can think of drawing exercises that often involve drawing circles. And there's a range of these that you might have seen, right? One that you might have seen is where we sort of draw some lines and you draw a series of ellipses or a series of circles within those lines. Now, those are quite good for just getting your hand in and understanding, you know, like what's likely to happen as you try to draw a circle. But the reason that we're often drawing circles is not because we're actually drawing a circle. It's because we're drawing a circle that is tilted in perspective. And that's something that we call an ellipse. Now, the ellipse has a bunch of anatomy to it that is actually very, very important and linked to your ability to draw forms in perspective that are cylindrical. Um, because again, the anatomy helps us to place the lines and line up these ellipses and make sure that they don't look wobbly. I'll get into the anatomy a little bit later, but at its core, the reason that I think it's better to practice drawing cylindrical forms as opposed to just sort of disembodied ellipses is because this is an applied version of the technique. Normally, when we're drawing ellipses, what we actually are often doing is we're sort of drawing two ellipses, right? One, two, and we kind of often want to make sure that they line up, right? That they relate to each other. And so that's why I think drawing a little sort of object as an exercise is a much better applied version versus just disembodied ellipses here. So how we do this is that we essentially try and draw little forms, little objects. Again, you could step up the complexity a little bit, which I won't in this exercise, but you could, you know, try and draw a, a bottle of some kind, right? And that might be another version of this. But what we're trying to do is, again, give us the best chance of doing that. And this simple exercise will improve your hand-eye coordination and most importantly, your ability to line up ellipses along a minor axis. And these skills, again, just your sort of core ability to draw an ellipse um, and your ability to line up again, the minor axis of that ellipse to understand, again, the anatomy of the ellipse and then also to understand how that minor axis, minor axis, sorry, will relate to other ellipses that are 
relative to each other. So that is really the, the, the point of it. If you want to just quickly have a go at this, um, yeah, I just recommend you basically try draw some coffee cups. That's basically the exercise. Um, and insofar as you can get them looking, you know, accurate, you know, looking as if they're, they're sort of, you know, sitting on a, on a table, right? Then, you know, you've sort of done the exercise. That's really all we need to do. Again, if you're struggling with that, there's probably a number of reasons why, which I'm going to cover in this video and they're to do with the anatomy of the ellipse. Just quickly though, if you want to learn a little bit more about structural drawing as it relates to something more applied, such as drawing heads, you can check out my free little mini workshop that goes over the top five head mistakes that people normally make and how to avoid them. Go check it out. The link will be in the description. Okay, so what do I mean by the anatomy of the ellipse? right, of Well, there's a couple of things that when it comes to just sort of drawing an ellipse or a circle in perspective that are really, really important to remember. Now, the first is that an ellipse has a minor and a major axis. a major and minor axis. Now, what that means is that we have essentially hidden geometry that is overlaid on every sort of correct ellipse that we draw. Now, the minor axis is merely the axis that sort of goes through the, the center of the ellipse at its sort of shortest dimension. And the major axis is just the opposite of that. The major axis is the axis that separates the ellipse again in half. We can think of this, the, the axis is dividing it into two sort of equal portions. And the minor axis is the one that um, intersects the ellipse at its sort of shortest dimension and the major is the one that intersects it at its longest dimension. Now, what, why is this important? Again, we'll, we'll get to that as we progress through it. Um, for the moment, let's just sort of go through the anatomy of the ellipse because there, there are other rules that are sort of in addition to this that will help us. But um, the one we normally are um, looking at is the minor axis, right? And this is the, the line that often you can think of as being the axis of the wheel. So here I have like a, an, an actual literal sort of toilet roll. And what you're imagining that sort of minor axis as being is just a sort of axle that is going through the cylindrical object in the center. Again, I haven't got it quite in the center there. But that's kind of what we're imagining, right? And again, apologies, that's a little bit fuzzy. But as we move it around, right, the idea is that that axle sort of stays there. Now, it doesn't exist. It's not something that really exists unless it is actually an axle on a wheel, which, um, you know, does does actually um, line up with this concept. And as a good way to remember it, it is a bit confusing because axis and axle are a little bit similar. But you can think of this as being the same, right? The minor axis is like the axle of a wheel. It's an imaginary line that goes through um, the center of all sort of cylindrical objects, right? So again, here we've sort of got a circle and you can imagine that there is sort of um, an imaginary line that's sort of going through there the whole time. Again, very similar to your sort of typical toilet roll, right? there is an imaginary axis that goes through there. And we actually use this to help us draw um, most cylindrical objects. All right, so the second little rule here is that the ellipse is always symmetrical over its axes. So the is always
over. Now, what this means is that, as you can see here, the, the axis is creating two separate sides here. And the key is that these sides are symmetrical. They're symmetrical in two dimensions. And that means that essentially, if I was to cut out this, this side and sort of flip it over, it would, it would be completely symmetrical and identical to this one. And that really is what you need to pay attention to. And so what that means is that if we were to look at a, um, an ellipse here, And we we'll have another ellipse here. So the correct sort of way that the minor axis will intersect is sort of directly down the middle and it will create one, two symmetrical sides. An incorrect um, axis would look something like this. So this is no longer creating two sort of symmetrical sides either, either side of it, right? So um, again, if I was to cut this out, um, you know, it would no longer, right? It would no longer sort of flip um, directly over. What we want is this sort of identical, symmetrical, um, sort of even division. <clears throat> now, that is something that is going to exist in uh, the minor axis and the major axis. So you can kind of think of this as being a situation where every ellipse is going to have a major axis and a minor axis. And because they both intersect in a symmetrical way, it means that we have one, two, three, four sort of quarters for any given ellipse and if you have drawn the minor axis and the major axis correctly these again will be completely identical to each other now why is that important well what this is telling us is what what a true ellipse looks like and what we're often actually having to do is line up a second ellipse from a first ellipse and we need their minor axes to match up. So what we're doing is we're drawing one ellipse and we have a minor axis that is sort of correctly drawn because we've figured out how to correctly draw it. But the trick is we then have to draw a second ellipse and what we want to do is again like the toilet roll we are sort of imagining that there is a, a solid sort of relationship between the sort of bottom ellipse and the top ellipse, right? Top ellipse, right? And the bottom ellipse that I'm drawing. Now, what I need to do is make sure that as I draw this second ellipse here, I need to make sure that this one is equal in the same way that this is. If that's correct, then it will allow me to easily, again, draw a sort of more accurate little toilet roll slash coffee cup object there. Again, these drawings I'm doing a, a little bit rough, right? That they're, they're not always 100% sort of accurate. I'm, I'm doing all of this just for illustration sort of purposes only. All right, so what is the third thing here? Let's move this up a little bit. What's the third thing here that we need to pay attention to? The third thing is that, again, as I said, the minor axis lines up with an imaginary center line or axle. And you can think of this as being, again, a good way to sort of remember it. So the concept here is that the minor axis lines up. Right, center line or axle. 
we can imagine this as being similar to a wheel. So again, if we draw a very simple little kind of wheel here, and we imagine that, you know, again, it's sort of like a, an old sort of wooden cartwheel or something like that. Again, we're going to have the axle of that wheel and that that is going to line up with the minor axis. So minor axis and axle. Here we go. Give us a bit of space there. Again, confusing because they, uh, you know, they sound similar, but this is a really, really good thing to, to try and help remember uh, what's going on when you're sort of, you know, trying to, you know, just get it, get it in your head at the beginning. And another, again, thing that we can sort of infer from this is that the major and minor axis are always at 90 degrees to each other in two dimensions. So what does that mean? It means that, again, we, if we look at the ellipse, we'll just describe this first from a technical perspective, and then we'll sort of see how that is meant to be applied. So again, we have a minor and major axis. Again, apologies, that one's a little bit sort of off angle. But the point here is that this should be right at 90 degrees or right angles. And the point here is that often what we're actually doing is we might have, again, like a minor axis that we're trying to line ellipses up to. Now, you can obviously, you know, try and make sure that when you draw those ellipses that we get equal spacing. But another really good trick, again, if you understand the basic geometry and understand the hidden geometry within the ellipse, is that if you do draw a line that is 90 degrees, to the minor axis, what you've actually drawn is the major axis. And this actually can make it a lot easier, oh, if I can do that properly, to then draw in an ellipse that I know is going to give me one, two, three, four symmetrical corners. So again, the point of the anatomy of the ellipse here and understanding it this way is that this describes to us the true nature of the ellipse and this will give you a lot of different troubleshooting options if you start to get your ellipses wrong. So again, in most cases, what we're trying to do is line different ellipses up, as I said, when we're drawing little sort of objects. So often what you'll actually do is you draw either an ellipse first or a minor axis first. And then your goal is actually to place ellipses along that relative to the minor axis. So let's look if we did that wrong, right? Maybe we get this ellipse right, but accidentally, right? We get this ellipse wrong. Maybe we get this ellipse wrong too. And you can see that, you know, this is not going to allow me to you know, create a nice little sort of vase shape, right? This is going to sort of create some weird um, sort of off axis form, which is typically not what we want. Um, you can obviously use this and, and understand that there may be different forms wherein, again, we're not trying to, you know, create something symmetrical. But in most cases, the, the reason that we are applying this is to create something that is symmetrical. So understanding how to line these up on a minor axis, again, if you're just trying to draw something very simple and cylindrical, like a toilet roll or something like that, um, again, like a tree or a gun barrel or a wheel or a stick, 
um, or an arm, right? You know, often uh, when we're sort of simplifying arms or fingers, right, we're simplifying them as cylindrical forms. So that's why this is so important. And that's why the anatomy of the ellipse is important. So just to go over it one last time, the first most fundamental thing that we need to pay attention to with ellipses is that an ellipse has a major and a minor axis. The minor axis is dividing the ellipse at its shortest dimension and the major axis is dividing the ellipse at its longest dimension. These axes are not something that is visible in the real world, but they are what we could consider sort of hidden geometry that underlies the world, and we can use that to help us draw these things. Second thing is that these ellipses um, and the axes are always creating symmetry. So a correctly placed minor axis is creating a symmetrical division between that ellipse. Again, that's a really good troubleshooting thing because often the biggest sort of mistake people are making is that, again, we're just sort of um, either, um, you know, you might have your sort of minor axis, right? But again, you know, often the ellipse is just maybe not quite straight, right? Or it might sort of be, you know, bigger at one end than the other. And you can see again that that's not a true ellipse. Again, how do you know? Well, again, this is the stuff that allows you to sort of troubleshoot it. The third thing is, again, a really good visualization technique is to understand that the minor axis lines up um, metaphorically with an imaginary center line or axle. So you can think of, again, any sort of wheel or object as having this kind of minor um, axis going through it. And if you think of something literal like a wheel or something like that that has an axis, uh, has an axle, sorry, that's a really good way to remember what's happening. Obviously, you can sort of see what's happening here. Um, the minor and major axes are going to meet at 90 degrees. Now, this is 90 degrees on the page. So what that means is you should be able to get a, right, and I guess it'll show that this is a bit of a rough one. Right, but that means uh, it, it's not sort of 90 degrees in perspective or anything like that. It, it's 90 degrees on the page. And that means, again, you should be able to sort of use a um, sort of triangle or, or set square or, or, or similar sort of drawing implement to help you get that. So anyway, that is the anatomy of the ellipse and that's why it's important. What we'll do next is just go over the 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 exercise in a little bit more detail and uh, give you a few more little tips for how this can actually work. What we need to do is just practice and play around with this. Now, as I said, you know, the, the most fundamental form that we're often trying to create is just the equal cylinder, right? And we can think about this as the, the toilet roll or something similar. Now, again, you know, you can see I'm getting some of these a little bit off you. You're always aiming for 100% accuracy, but what what part of this exercise is also you learning to kind of push the boundaries a little bit and try to also work your hand-eye coordination. So what you can imagine is that often what we're actually doing is we're creating a variety of these cylinders when we are creating different sort of objects when we're drawing them, right? Um, again, as I often sort of say, you know, if you're drawing a tree, right, we're, we often sort of have some sort of basic, right, some sort of basic version of this that um, underlies the tree. So either way, often what you're doing is you're combining them. And what that means is that you often don't get to choose exactly where you draw the ellipse. And that's why I think the idea of, again, doing a sort of static ellipse exercise where we sort of just try and draw ellipses and try and draw them fast is less effective than this because this is the applied version of that. And that is that essentially what you're going to have is a variety of these minor axes and what you're going to have to do is figure out how to draw those ellipses at different angles and that's where 
you kind of get to set the level of difficulty a bit, right? This is totally um, in your court. It's totally up to you. But you can see that what I'm trying to practice is getting the anatomy of those ellipses right and joining them up. Now, not everyone you do is going to be perfect. But the point here is that if we experiment with different angles and different ways that we're going to have to move our hand, we're actually practicing, again, drawing ellipses from different angles. Now, again, you know, you could just kind of, you know, draw a whole bunch of ellipses. But as I said, often the actual skill that we're trying to achieve is to draw two ellipses, ellipses that relate to each other. Now, specifically how you calculate which ellipse, you know, gets bigger or which ellipse gets smaller, I wouldn't worry too much about that with this exercise. You can think of it as, again, just sort of drawing two ellipses that are fairly kind of equal and trying to sort of line them up. But there obviously is extra perspective geometry that underlies this. And um, you can kind of shortcut that in the following way. And that's just to understand the basic concept that if we sort of look at a toilet roll or you know a cup or anything that you can kind of see, Again, um, the camera here is acting as our eye and the, the center of that vision is kind of pretty much in the center of this um, screen that you're looking at, kind of about there where my pencil is. And what you can see is that, um, again, as I sort of move this toilet roll down, you're going to start to see more and more and more of the top of that ellipse, right? So as I move this back up, it's getting closer and closer to the horizon line or the center of vision. And as it sort of crosses that center of vision, right, you're going to see that we now can no longer see down into that toilet roll. We're actually looking up, right? So, you know, what you sort of see is, you know, this one here at some point, right, we'll start to be able to see into the bottom of that, right? So the basic concept there is that below the horizon line or your sort of center of vision, right, as you're looking down at something, you will see um, a wider ellipse. Okay, so we can again describe that pretty basically. If I'm just kind of looking directly at the top of an ellipse, you can see that the ellipse is quite closed, right? It's a lower angle of an ellipse. As I sort of tilt it up, right, you see that it gets bigger and bigger. So what that means is that, again, we have hidden ellipses. The ellipse down here, again, what we'd have to do to draw this cylinder is we'd have to draw the top ellipse and the bottom ellipse, and then we'd have to join it up and draw the sides, right? And obviously then render it if we wanted to make it sort of realistic. But the, the fundamental observation is that this ellipse is going to be a sort of lower degree ellipse, i.e. it's going to be smaller than the bottom ellipse. So the bottom ellipse here is going to be more open. Right, and this one is. Right, and that's the basic observation that you can use. So if you think about I'm, you know, I, okay, I'm, I'm going to draw an ellipse and I have a minor axis to go on that ellipse. The question is, um, you know, where are we sort of viewing this from? And you can start to visualize that. Again, you don't have to get into the technicalities of perspective, although if you do want to, they're, 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 they are there and they're quite complicated. But again, this fundamental observation that, again, the further away from our, if we think about our sort of eye, right, might be sort of somewhere up here in relation to this. We're sort of looking down here. We can see a little bit inside the top of that toilet roll. Well, if that's the case, you can bet that the, the bottom ellipse here that is further away from our eye line is actually going to be even bigger. It's going to be a more open ellipse. So what that means is that basically, again, what you can sort of surmise is that if I'm drawing an ellipse here, 
right? And I sort of imagine, well, it looks like I can see into the top of that ellipse, right? We can sort of imagine it's, it's, it's kind of like that. And what that means is that, again, I can sort of draw the sides of this, um, just, you know, and line them up with that center line. But I, I can't quite see the ellipse here in, in reality, but when I'm drawing it, what I'm going to do is draw through, right? I'm going to draw the whole thing. And I just can use the basic logic that this one is going to be more open, right? Or bigger or whatever you want to call it than the top one. And again, you know, that's the, you know, the basic sort of logic that you can use to try and sort of visualize. Again, I really recommend just, you know, getting either a coffee cup or a toilet roll. Hopefully you have access to either one of those things. Normally we're just throwing these things out left, right, and center. So just look at it, right? Look at it and observe those things that are happening, right? As it goes below, can you imagine horizon line is kind of here, right? As it goes below the horizon line, we see it, right? As it sort of reaches the center, you start to see, oh, now I can't see it, right? And you could imagine if we could see it, now it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's the basic sort of observation. It's not technical perspective, but it is an observation that you can use to um, figure out which one of these ellipses is bigger or smaller. And that basically is the exercise. This is the thing that you're going to be doing the most when you are drawing cylinders is having to draw them at different angles, right? You're not going to be drawing them statically. So you need to practice the applied version of this as much as possible. That means when you actually go to do it, when you're drawing your real thing, right? Maybe again, you're sort of imagining, okay, I've got like an arm here, right? And this arm is kind of a, you know, a, a cylinder here. And then I've got you know, another kind of arm cylinder here, right? And then what we're going to try and do is, you know, then sort of build that, right? And, um, you know, make something more interesting out of it, right? Add some sort of extra form or whatever. Again, sort of deltoid, right? Bicep, something like that. So as, as we sort of build those forms from the simple um, cylindrical objects, what we're actually, you know, often wanting to do is just draw a whole bunch of these really quickly. That's what you want to practice. And you can practice it with, again, as I said, the simplest version of this, which is the toilet roll or the coffee cup. Again, all the coffee cup is doing is, you know, we're just imagining that we're, we're drawing different sizes of ellipses. And we're trying to make sure that they line up with the same minor axis. You can draw the minor axis first and then try and line up different ellipses with it. You can practice drawing two ellipses, right? And then see, well, did I get it right? You know, and then you can draw the minor axis through. If you got it right, that's good. If you get it wrong, right, that, that might look a little bit more like this. You know, if you sort of you know, if you sort of get it a bit like that and you sort of try and draw the minor, you're going to be like, uh, it's not, you know, it's not quite right. It's a little bit sort of off or whatever, or, or maybe again, you know, it, it's not sitting on a table right now because, you know, you sort of didn't quite get it all correct. So it's just a matter of practicing those things. You can start with the minor axis. You can start with one ellipse and then put a minor axis in. You can practice just kind of drawing two, as I said, two disembodied, ellipses and kind of hope you get them right but again you can test and you can you know put that minor axis in and you can see like oh that one's a little bit wrong needs to be a little bit wider over here um, again maybe you drew one of the ellipses you know way off the minor axis like that in which case um, again you know it's just giving you a way to troubleshoot your problems because what you're trying to do is always just get your guesstimation your estimation of drawing these forms to be really good on the first go. So again, you could just sort of block in a few little forms and then build some secondary forms on top of that. But anyway, that's the exercise. Have fun with it. Um, I'll have a few more little tips that we can use to, um, again, improve this that I'll cover on next. Now, the tips that I have that I think are really, really important to pay attention to here is that these exercises are good to do now and then. 
um, doing, you know, 12 hours of this isn't going to make you a better artist. But every now and then, you know, doing this for sort of 10 minutes a day will make you a much, much better artist. It will improve your hand-eye coordination um, a lot. Because again, what we're trying to do is line up these things. And a lot of that involves visualization on the subconscious mind. It's not always something you can do um, quickly and effortlessly by sort of thinking about it. It's happening behind the curtain, behind the scenes. And what you're trying to optimize there is essentially the neurological rate of adaptation which is most likely to be effective while you're sleeping. So what that means is that if you do a little bit of this every day, you know, again, five minutes, 10 minutes, um, and again, not just this exercise, but these types of exercises, if you do a little bit every day, then you sort of adapt as you sleep and your brain kind of starts to sort of figure these things out as you go. So again, just practice now and then, do a few, don't go crazy, don't sort of try and smash this out and, you know, make your fingers bleed or anything sort of silly like that. Um, just a little bit will go a long way. That's the most important thing that I would say. The second thing is that you sort of need to drill it, right? This is a little bit of a boring exercise, but as I said, you know, just doing the same thing um, again and again will help. Uh, it's not something where you need to make it immensely more complicated. If you just focus on this basic task, but as I said, do it a little bit each day, that will actually help because what you're trying to do is get your ability to draw one ellipse and another ellipse and have them relate to each other accurately following the anatomy of the ellipse. And if you can do that effortlessly, then everything becomes a lot easier. The last thing I'd say is I would say try and apply this as much as possible. Think about the situations where you are likely to draw ellipses. Again, things like drawing trees, drawing wheels. If you're drawing a lot of anatomy, again, there's a lot of hidden elliptical forms like fingers and, um, you know, forearms, biceps, right? There's a lot of sort of basic cylindrical forms within anatomy. Try and block these in and use these skills and apply them as much as possible. Um, again, there's a lot of different situations where you can use this. And it's not just a matter of doing the abstract exercises. Try and apply it. Um, just jump in and actually get going um, as soon as possible. Anyway, that's it. That's all I've got for this one. Again, the importance of drawing the cylinder can't be understated. It's such an important part of drawing. And I think one of the hidden things that not a lot of people often focus on when they're starting out is just really understanding the minor axis relationship and understanding how that helps you to create accurate looking cylinders. If you really master this, it makes a lot of drawing tasks much, much easier and more fun. So good luck with it. Anyway, that's all I've got for this one. We'll catch you around. Happy drawing.